Hey everyone, Cycling Docs here, Dr. Alex Ritza. Today's video, a quick one. We're gonna be talking about five things to watch out for that might be contributing to some knee pain or knee problems when you're on your bike on the trainer indoors. So let's get into it. So this video inspired by my own knee pain that didn't start with indoor riding, but is typically aggravated or perpetuated by. If you want to know what I did to get rid of my knee pain, you can check out the video in the link below. But these are five things that I noticed were causing or contributing to some of the problem in their own little way. So number one, it might sound simple, make sure that your trainer is level. I noticed that with my trainer, I had a Wahoo kicker, and now I have the Saris H3. It's got the little legs that you can adjust. I noticed that when I put a leveler on the handlebars and a leveler on the seats, that they were number one, a bit crooked, and number two, they were slightly off in their angle. And so it took me a couple of months of fiddling around with my knee to realize that part of the problem was actually my bike setup and that my bike was literally a little tilted. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why I felt uneven on the saddle, not something that I ever feel outside, but a problem indoors. And I bet you notice if you measure your floor underneath where your bike is, it may or may not be level. So just make sure that it's not a problem that's contributing to any issues for you inside. Number two, now this is a problem that could affect you indoors and outdoors, but typically our trainer bike, if you have a different bike, it might be a little more worn down like mine is. So something to make sure that your float in your pedals is not too significant. This I've had an issue with in the past where just wear and tear, the float becomes longer or wider and wider and wider. And that initial four degrees on your look keel or your garments or whatever kind of pedals you have, that can becomes upwards of like 20 degrees. So make sure that you check your clips, make sure that you check your shoe, make sure that the float or how much it wiggles back and forth is not excessive. You probably want it around what it comes with when you buy it, whether you're buying the zero, the four, or the eight degree float, you probably want it somewhere in that initial range to make sure that it's not putting an undue amount of repetitive strain or stress on the knee. Number three is a bit of a weird one, and I'm actually not sure if it's gonna be an issue for many people other than me. It reminds me back to when I was golfing and was actually like a golfer, and where if your alignment was off, it really changed your setup and your swing. And so for something for me on the bike, I, like I said, I don't know if this is an issue, but I try to make sure that my bike is perfectly aligned with my screen or the TV and align with the window and everything I look at straight ahead. And so my thoughts and feelings on this are that if your bike is maybe a little crooked compared to your TV or compared to the wall that you're staring at, it might be that your, your vision is on a different track than your knees and that could cause an imbalance in how the knees are lined up with your bike. For this, what I would do, and it kind of comes down uh, to uh, the other point that we made, making sure that your pelvis is uh, square on the seat, is if you apply a little bit of pressure onto the handlebars and push yourself back, that should help to make sure that you can feel your sit bones on the saddle. So, you know, I will put my hands on the hoods, on the drops, on the tops, and I'll make sure in those positions that I can feel my sit bones on the saddle, that they are equal on both sides, and that my pelvis feels perfectly lined up straight forward with the bike, and that it's not lined up at an angle with maybe the wall in front of you or the TV or the screen in front of you, and that your pelvis is not shifting towards the direction of your gaze. The fourth point that I would check is to make sure that you have something a little soft underneath your trainer to give it a little bit of sway. So one of the biggest reasons why, in my experience, more people have trouble with their trainer indoors 
than their bike outdoors is that there's no medial lateral there's no side to side movement in the bike which is going to put a lot more stress and strain on your knees so try to make sure that your bike does have a little bit of wiggle back and forth a couple things that you can try i put mine on a yoga mat on top of a carpet so that there is some play in the bike for a little while when my knee was bugging me i was also experimenting with putting some memory foam underneath all of the contact points of the bike which also increased that left right movement in the bike and in the trainer even more and the idea with this is if you can make it more similar to how your bike feels outside it's going to put a little bit less repetitive strain on your knees because your pedal stroke will be a bit natural so the recommendation here is if you don't have like a rock and roll trainer if you don't have a rocker plate that your bike sits on make sure that it's not sitting on direct concrete or wood try to have it on a carpet try to have it on a mat try to make sure that when you go to wiggle the bike that there is a little bit of play back and forth and last but not least probably the most controversial point is going to be if you don't have a mobility routine make sure you're doing some stretching before you hop on the bike now this is where somebody's going to say stretching is bad kills performance and if you look at static stretching yeah it does but when we say like kills performance or performance goes down we're talking like a small amount and like you know i am very very serious about performance i want to be my best yada 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 but you know what kills performance getting hurt and not being able to ride for a couple weeks and getting bedridden so for me i always will say a do some dynamic stretching you can check out my pre-bike routine below it takes three to five minutes that in my experience when i do it i feel better on the bike i enjoy it more my knees bug me less and, and number two even if it, like dynamic stretching brings down the performance a bit which the research says it shouldn't we're talking such a small amount that it shouldn't affect your training it shouldn't affect your long-term performance nearly as much as if you have an injury i would say that if you're doing some regular stretching or mo uh, mobility routine off the bike then probably don't need to do the stretching before you hop on but for most people you know they get out their trainer they're going to get on it's easier to do this three to five minutes before you get on the bike than finding another three to five minutes sometime else in the day and i would 100 percent recommend doing the stretching before than after for injury prevention that works best in my experience so you know we all don't like being on the trainer as much as we like being outside but you know, sometimes it is a necessary evil and heck, sometimes it's even a little bit of fun. The trainer's a little bit tougher on the body because it just doesn't move back and forth like a regular bike. It puts a lot of repetitive strain onto the knees. And what the trainer inside does is it's gonna highlight any little problem in your body or in your fit. And if you can make it through an entire winter, typically with no issues, generally it's a good indication the body and the fit are in a good position if you don't that's a reflection where there's probably an underlying problem with the body or there's an underlying problem with the fit that should be addressed but the things that we're going to talk about they should help to mediate or eliminate those issues moving forward so gals and guys make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel i really appreciate you watching i hope that these tips were helpful for most people, they're not going to be the problem, but they're also really low-hanging fruit that we want to make sure that is not a stupid problem that's causing your knee to bug you. So make sure you check these things, make sure you're doing them, make sure they're not an issue. And as always, hope you guys can ride healthy, ride strong, have fun. I'll see you out there.